but we also have a 5D Mark III. So we're gonna shoot. Did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> What you got there? What's up guys? We are here in Salt Lake City. We're about to head up to the High Uintas. It's about an hour away. And we're gonna go over five to six best practices if you are looking to do star photography or Milky Way photography. And this will be pretty much everything from the gear that you should use, the settings that I use, and location, time of year, pretty much everything like that. So we're gonna head up, it's about an hour drive. It's about 10.30. So we should be getting there about 11.30, 11.40. And yeah, hopefully the Milky Way will be out. We got clear skies at the moment, it's looking good. We're gonna head up that way and we will see what we get. Okay, so we just pulled into Park City. Uh, we're just gonna fill up gas and uh, about 30 minutes out. And yeah, doing good. Look, where we headed. Okay, so we've got to the main highway that goes up this canyon. And I was telling Alec that there are so many deer up this canyon, they're just all over the place. And we've already ran into like probably 20 deer. So we'll see if we get some on camera. But we actually have these sick lights on a, it's my dad's truck, it's not my truck. I wish I could say it's my truck. But we just got some really sick uh, headlights on these trucks. So if you wanna see, this is what it looks like with your brights on. And then this is what it looks like with our headlight. He's a little guy. Mom, I can't see. He's like, don't look at me. Oh yeah, dude, the stars are sick. Okay, so we have got to our first location. You can't really tell, you might be able to tell, but there's snow all over the place. Kind of, yeah, you can tell there. So there's tons of snow for October. There's a lake for us. Like steam on it. We haven't seen any other cars up here either, which is cool. Okay, so pretty much tip number one, uh, you're gonna want a DSLR. Um, so a camera that has the ability to use like manual, um, cause you're gonna need to be able to set your own settings when you're shooting stars. Cause if you just have it in auto, it's not gonna be able to take the right exposure because uh, you need a longer exposure to see the stars so oh, it's like sh i'm like cold <laughs> my voice is like shaking i'm freezing <laughs> we're shooting this video on my 1dx but we also have a 5d mark three so we're gonna shoot did you hear that <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately yeah i did <laughs> <laughs> just heard something i think it's probably a coyote Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just freaking out here, man. I just hear some steps like coming toward this. Like, ah! <laughs> Don't say that. Okay, so we're shooting with the 1DX on video. We're gonna shoot the photos on my 5D Mark III Canon. I might switch lenses, but probably just using a 24 to 105 F4. Grab this little guy. Oh, also you're gonna need handy dandy tripod because if you don't, the shots aren't gonna be stable. <laughs> <laughs> we're, see we're hearing some crazy noises. Or it could be a fox. Could be a fox. Freaking out, man. <laughs> Alec, I think we should split up. <laughs> All right. Follow me. <laughs> okay, so we're going to set up this tripod. How cold do you think it is right now? I'd probably guess maybe like uh, 25. 25? Ish. Sounds about right to me. It's chilly. It's only October too. It's not even October. It's like September, end of September. 
So a big thing with taking night photos is you want to know what your composition is going to look like. So usually I'll like go and scope things out ahead of time. So I know what my landscape is going to look like when I'm shooting it. Um, I've driven this road quite a bit, so I kind of know kind of what we're, we're shooting. But basically we have a, a lake on this side of the highway and then we have a lake on this side of the highway. I love that we just hear this like <laughs> random noise out there. See, normally I'd be by myself and I'd be like shitting my pants. <laughs> I'd be so scared. <laughs> well, that's why I wanted to come. I was just like, I can't, I can't let Logan die by himself. Well, that's, a, that's the thing is like normally I, like normally I am doing this by myself and yeah. I just kind of have to like, if you're happy and you know, clap like, your hands. I've got a gun. <laughs> I'm not afraid to use it. <laughs> like I said, number one. You're gonna want a DSR, DSLR. My mouth is numb. You can shoot on any, obviously any camera, Sony, Nikon, Canon. The bigger your sensor, uh, the better. So if you're shooting full frame, uh, it, it basically just allows your low light capabilities to be better, um, which then allows you to have less noise in your image. Just the overall clear image in general. I like doing like, circles make sure nothing's sneaking yeah. up on us <laughs> so yeah you need a good dslr you can shoot solid night photos on like a crop sensor camera but again a, a larger sensor is going to give you just a clear image number two is the lens that you're shooting on um this lens on lens on here it's not really it's not the best lens for star photography because it's an f4 normally you want something anything lower than an f4 will do pretty good with stars so the lens we're shooting on the video it is a 2.8 if you have like a lens that does like uh like 2.0 or even lower it just allows you to bring in more light so you're not using your iso as much iso is what's going to make your image more grainy so the lower your iso the better but this lens will do i've shot star photos on it before and it works great so let me see what my next i got my notes here as always also a huge factor with shooting stars and especially the milky way is going to be uh, the time of year that you're shooting the best time to shoot your milky way shots are going to be around august fall ish yeah we're like july august september those three months are like the prime months for milky way stuff just because the way the earth is spinning i don't know something like that science rules makes it so that the milky way can be straight up in the sky anytime at any time like if you try to shoot milky way in the middle of the winter uh the milky way the cloudy part of the milky way is going to be like on the horizon or it doesn't rise until like 7 a.m so you're not going to be able to get it because it'll be too light by then <sighs> so yeah this is like the best time to shoot it's kind of late in the season right now that's why i wanted to make sure i shot this before winter comes but i think we'll still get some good some good star photos two apps that i use that are freaking clutch when it comes to star photography are um the just a moon phase app because you want to also be shooting when there's no moon or when it's a new moon new moon yeah so you want to shoot when there's a new moon um so basically when there's no moon out because again the moon surprisingly will light up the sky quite a bit so you won't be able to see milky way as easy um so make sure that you're shooting during a new moon or somewhere around a new moon there can be a moon out, but just make sure it's like less than half of a moon. Um, the second app that I use, it's called Sky Guide. I'll put these both in the description. My hand's like shaking, I'm like freezing. <laughs> this one I think is like a couple dollars on the app store. But the cool thing about this app is if you hold it, it locks onto your GPS. So you can tell where the Milky Way is gonna be at with, compared to where you're at. Oh, wow. So pretty much like right now, 1230, the Milky Way is going straight up and down, which is exactly what I had planned for. And the cool thing about this app is you can actually choose the time of day. So you can go in and you can like fast forward it. So you can see what it'll be like if you fast forward, it's like 1 a.m. This is what it'll be like at 3 a.m. So you can really plan your shots with this and see kind of where the Milky Way is gonna be at. Again, that's Sky Guide and I think it's a moon phase. You can find the moon phases on like Google. Okay, now we're gonna jump into our settings and kind of basic settings for when I'm shooting this type of stuff. We're gonna switch the camera to portrait so we can get the whole Milky Way. Once you figure out your focus, like once you focus on a star, which can be tricky, 
the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. Put your camera in manual focus, just so your sensor or your focus isn't trying to focus on an empty space. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our shutter speed. Um, usually your shutter, again, the lower you can do your shutter, the better, just cause then your stars aren't moving as much. Usually I typically go to about 25 seconds. So we'll jump on here. And like I said, this camera's only goes to a 4.0. If I had the lens that's on my 1DX right now, I'd go to 2.8. And again, the lower the better. We'll do 4.0. And then for my ISO, you're gonna wanna bounce that up to like 5,000. And I remember when I first was doing star photography, once I kicked it up to 5,000, that's when I could really see the clouds of the Milky Way. Anything lower than that, you're probably not gonna see the clouds as well. Don't be afraid to bump your ISO up pretty high. I'm still like looking around. <laughs> Who's there? Oh, and last but not least, put your camera on like a two second timer so that you can push the photo and it's not gonna have any uh, camera shake. So we'll take our first photo and then we will see if our settings are correct. Come take a look at the photo. Let's see if we got, if we got our Milky Way shot here. I'll put the settings again on the screen. So as you can see right there, but it looks like we got the Milky Way pretty solid on there. So now we got some shots. We're gonna go down to the lake, try to get some like cool reflection shots. Um, I'm not sure what we're gonna get, but it is worth the try. Oh, this thing's so cold. Stuck? <laughs> Stuck? 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 But the bell rang. The bell rang. We're gonna continue on taking photos. I think the Milky Way, yeah, Milky Way is straight up, so we're gonna shoot this way. And go. Like I said, we're just gonna get a couple more exposures, just playing around with kind of our composition with like, we have the trees with the Milky Way going above it. Um, but so far, they're looking dope, looking really good. Now we're gonna go warm up in the car because Alex's hands are freezing and so are mine. <laughs> And then we're gonna get warm and we're gonna drive up the highway a little bit further where there's kind of a lookout point. It's kind of like a scenic overlook. And we'll shoot some more photos up there. And I think by then we'll be good. So we'll see what we get. So to summarize the video, um, again, you're gonna want a DSLR. So full frame is your better option just cause you're gonna have better low light capabilities and larger image resolution. Um, so you're gonna want a DSLR. You're gonna want a lens that's wide angle that also has a low aperture because it's gonna help a ton with bringing in more light. You're gonna wanna make sure that you're shooting in between uh, like June, July, August, September. We're shooting like end of September and I can already tell the Milky Way isn't as cloudy as we had hoped, but we still got some good ones. That scared me, I heard like a noise. <laughs> I thought it was behind me. <laughs> the two apps that I mentioned are Sky Guide and Moon Phases. Those are like my go-to, they help a ton. You know, higher ISO, lower aperture, and a longer shutter speed. Um, you kind of just have to play with them. It depends on where you're at with your location. Uh, if you have a lot of light pollution, it's gonna really fill in the sky. So you wanna go somewhere that's more distant like we are. We're up here in the middle of the wilderness, like an hour from a city. Um, so the light pollution is really low. So it's a lot easier to get a really clear sky in Milky Way. So pay, pay attention to your location, pay attention to time of year. Uh, know your location, know where you're gonna be shooting, you know, what your foreground's gonna look like. Um, it really helps because you can use that to frame the image. You can help frame, you know, the Milky Way if there's like trees underneath, stuff like that um, are all just things to keep in mind when you're shooting photos um, and to help kind of create a quality image. So I think uh, we're gonna wrap it up here. It's about 1.30 a.m. Uh, we got about an hour drive to head home. So make sure to comment, like, subscribe. And if you guys have questions, throw them in the comment section. If you have questions about gear, let me know. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.